praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, so as we are again sitting in the presence of God, let us uh, I mean, turn our attention to uh, Psalm number 102, uh, verses 6 and 7. You know, uh, last Sunday I was uh, uh, preaching about uh, uh, David, the lonely and restless bird. Amen. So David, the lonely and restless bird. Uh, now, uh, you know, that was the, I mean, that was from Psalm number 102, uh, verse 6. And we uh, saw that in the Bible, uh, David is comparing himself with, uh, I mean, some of the birds. Amen. Uh, so the first bird which I told you was the pelican uh, of the wilderness and how he was, uh, I mean, comparing, how David was comparing uh, himself with the pelican of the uh, wilderness and uh, the isolated situations of David and many other I mean, servants of God in Bible and what was the provision of God in the situation of uh, the isolation of them. So that was the I mean, main topic that we were uh, discussing in the, uh, the other Sunday. You know, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, here, uh, David, the psalmist is uh, I mean, comparing himself with a, with, a, with a lonely and restless bird like uh, I mean, Pelican. You know, we have seen many people in the Bible that uh, uh, they were going through uh, the situation of the wilderness, that means uh, the loneliness and isolation. You know, we have seen that, uh, I mean, uh, God's presence were, was there and uh, God provided all the needs of those people. I mean, uh, and uh, I mean, whenever they were uh, going through the situation of the loneliness and isolation, I mean, God's provisions was, was there and God's presence was there. Hallelujah. Now, the second word is the, uh, the owl. The owl of the empty place. Now we will go to the second bird. Okay, so the the first one was the pelican of the wilderness. That was from uh, that was from uh, I mean uh, Psalm number one hundred and two, verse six. Now again, uh, now the second bird is the owl uh, that is the, I mean uh, uh, of the empty place, or uh, uh, that we can see uh, from I mean Psalm number one hundred and two, verse six itself. Okay. So we will read that verse. I mean, Cedric will be reading the Bible verses today. And I request, uh, I mean, Cedric to lead, uh, uh, read once again, that Psalm number 102, uh, verse 6. Psalm 102, verse number 6. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. Yes. In this verse, David says that I am like, a, like an owl in the empty place or waste place. Amen. So very slowly we are moving this morning uh, because we have to understand what the Lord has to speak to us this morning. Amen. So here David says that I am like an owl in the empty place or waste place. Amen. The owl is like the pelican is also an unclean bird, not to be eaten by the people. We read from Leviticus. Amen. And again, the owl is naturally, uh, I mean, a, 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 a solitary bird. It's a solitary bird and it's, it's flying alone, seeking its prey. I mean, always it's a solitary bird and flying alone, uh, seeking its prey. And sometimes this bird makes a kind of sorrowful noise. This, I mean, a bird makes a kind of sorrowful noise. You know, and usually this bird, uh, will come out in the uh, out in, in the daytime. Usually, you cannot see the the, the, the owl. I mean, uh, in the daytime, but it flies in the nighttime only. Okay, and usually the other birds uh, don't like to accompany uh, with this bird also. But sometimes they uh, together when comes together and they try to attack the owl. So that's the situation of this bird. I mean, so usually you know the other birds will come together and they will try to attack this bird. Okay, this all and always, I mean, uh, it is coming out of uh, his, its nets, I mean, uh, maybe in the night. Day. Okay, so uh, it is said that because of the, because of the hooting sound, which usually the owls, I mean, produce, the dogs bark at them during the night time also. You know, in the night time, when you hear, when, when you listen to the, I mean, the, the barking sound of dogs, you know, sometimes they are, uh, I mean, watching or they are uh, listening that hooting sound of the, I mean, owls, okay? The, the, the owls are, uh, are producing the hooting sound. So when they get that sound, you know, dogs usually bark at them during the night time. So the empty place also is written there. So mentioned here in this verse, six verse that, uh, I mean, this all is of, 
uh, the empty place or the waste place. So the empty place or the waste place mentioned here uh, speaks about a place of ruin, a place of desolation or a place of uh, destruction. Okay, so this, this is what we understand, you know, it says that David it says that I'm just like a, an, an owl of the waste place. I mean, I'm coming from the, I, I'm sitting in a waste place or I'm sitting in an empty place. I mean, which means it speaks about the place of ruin. There is nothing. That means only the waste are there. The place of desolation, the place of destruction, the place of destruction. So therefore, when we speak about the owl, we get a clear picture of failure and defeat which happened in the life of David. That's what we are going to I mean, look into. You know, David was going through different situations. Maybe sometimes he was, I mean, see, he was defeated. Sometimes he was, I mean, I mean, facing the failure in his life. I mean, sometimes he was going through the affliction. You know, whenever he was going through the affliction and whenever he was going through the failure and the defeat, you know, what happened was he was always trusting in the Lord. He was always trusting in the Lord. He was always praying. You know, when you read uh, all the Psalms which was written by I mean, David, he is trying to pray in the presence of God. Whatever happens in his life, whatever the challenges that uh, he is facing, whatever the troublesome situation that he is going through, he is trying to pray in the presence of God. And he is proclaiming that I am trusting in the Lord always. I'm trusting in the Lord always. And I'm praying in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Because he was knowing that whatever the situation is, when I pray and when I trust in the Lord and there will be revealing the presence of God and the power of God. Hallelujah. And that's the reason I can tell you that uh, this is the clear picture of David that uh, I mean, the, the, the picture of the, the situation of failure and the dif I mean, difficulties and the, and the affliction and defeat which happened uh, in the life of uh, I mean, uh, David. Now we will go to I mean, Psalm number 38 verse 11. We will read that I mean, verse. Uh, Psalm number 38 verse 11. Yeah. My loved ones and my friends, stand aloof from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. You know, you have to look into that verse, particularly it says that, my loved ones and my friends and my kinsmen stands afar off me. This is a painful situation, really. You know, David says that, I was thinking that, okay, all my friends and all my colleagues and all my I mean, neighbors, all my family members, they will be standing with me in my affliction. But now, they will say that my loved ones, the people, those who were loving me so much, and the friends, and the kinsmen, and all my relatives, all my friends, they are standing a part of me. They are standing a part of me. You know, while David was defeated, and while he was disturbed, and attacked by his enemies, and when all the Enemies gang, I mean, gang upon David. He expected that his friends might stand with him, but we see here that his loved ones abandoned him. They all left him alone. You know, he was going through many attacks of the enemies. He was many times he was defeated. He was disturbed. You know, the enemies were, I mean, coming together and just, I mean, oppressing this David, the psalmist. While he was maybe he was in in the throne, just like a king, but at the same time he had an expectation, and he was expecting that his friends and his relatives and his people would stand with him. But we see here in this situation that all his loved ones have abandoned him, and they all left him alone. Now he is alone. So in the midst of the physical and emotional difficulties and attacks. He acknowledged his own personal helplessness. He says that I'm helpless. I can't do anything. He realized that he is alone. He cannot do anything in this situation. Hallelujah. So in the midst of the physical and emotional difficulties, let me tell you one thing, that he had to go through many physical difficulties, physical illness in his life. So when you read all the Psalms of I mean, David, he is expressing and he's explaining many things about what was the physical I mean, difficulties and physical I mean, illness that he was I mean, going through. And, then, so, and, and, and he was going through the attacks of the enemy. In that situation, 
He says that I acknowledge myself that I am helpless. I mean, nobody is there to help me. Nobody is there to support me. And he realized that he alone cannot do anything in this situation. I mean, you know, he was neglected of his friends. He was neglected of his friends. They were turning away from him in his trial. That's why he is comparing himself with an owl here in Psalm number 102, verse 6. So this is the main reason that David, the Samish David, is comparing himself with an owl in the in the I mean, uh, uh, in the in the I mean, waste place or the empty place. I mean, because he was neglected many times by his friends, by his relatives, by his I mean, kinsmen, by his loved ones. I mean, many of the time his loved ones were opposing him. They were trying to attack him. You know, when you read First uh, uh, Samuel chapter seventeen. We are not going to read that uh, I mean, chapter because uh, the whole chapter is speaking about uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the problem and the attack and the uh, I mean, revolt that uh, which uh, I mean, he was facing. And when you read uh, uh, some, uh, sorry, First Samuel chapter 17, uh, we read about how David defeated and killed Goliath. I mean, so there, there is a fight. There is a battle between David and Goliath. You know, the Philistines were the enemies of the Israelites and of God. The Philistines were always the enemies of God and also the people of Israel. Here in this battle, in this battle, you see Goliath is challenging the people of Israel for 40 days continued. For 40 days, Goliath is challenging the people of Israel. Uh, 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 Goliath is I mean, challenging the people of Israel and also the living God for 40 days continually. So Goliath was a champion, uh, was, was the champion warrior for the Philistines. Okay, so Goliath was a champion warrior for the Philistines, and he was, I mean, over, over, over nine feet tall, and he wrote, he, he, he wore a lot of armor and carried many weapons. You know, this person was having many weapons in his body, and there were many people to protect him also. Okay, his soldiers and his army was protected by him, and they were protecting him. And he was he was in a secure place. place. He was in a security, so there is nothing to uh, there. There is nobody to harm him, and then nothing is going to happen with uh, I mean, Goliath in that situation because he is having all the weapons. I mean, he he was wearing a lot of armor and carried many weapons in his hands and, and in his body. So the king Saul and Israel army were terrified and rebelling on the challenges of Goliath. You know, King Saul and the people of Israel, they were so terri I mean, terrified and they, they were just trembled. They, they, they were just trembling before the Goliath because Goliath was, I mean, challenging, challenging, challenging always, I mean, the people of Israel and the living God. You know, so David's three older brothers also were serving in Saul's army. Uh, three, I mean, all the brothers of David, they were also, I mean, serving Saul's army. Saul was the king of Israel on those days, and uh, I mean, uh, David's three older brothers also were um, there in the army of Israel. So they were also helpless. We know that, you know, when you, when you go through that history, uh, his brothers, they were warriors. They know how to do the battle, but they were helpless. But what happened was, David said, Okay. He comes uh, from the, the far place and he, he is I mean, just entering into the story and he is saying something. He said, I will handle this problem. I will fight against him and Almighty God will give him in my hands. Hallelujah. So David, even though he was a small boy, he was increased by the word of God. He was increased by the presence of God. And he says that, okay, there is no problem for Saul. You are helpless. My brothers, you are warriors, but you are helpless. You can't do anything with the, this Goliath. But I will handle this problem and I will fight against him. And the almighty God will give him in my hands. That was the, I mean, the, that was the I mean, confidence of David in the almighty God. Hallelujah. You know, King Saul, disgraced to him. His own brothers disgraced to him. Okay, they, they said, you cannot do this because you are a small boy. So all the people, those who were, those who were I mean, uh, there, they were just trying to, I mean, uh, I mean, discourage him. 
So they were trying to discourage him. All the people, all the army, and, and King Saul, and also his own brothers, they were trying to discourage him. They said, you cannot do this. You cannot fight against the Saul because, I mean, you are a small boy. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, you know, nobody was ready to go with him to fight against Goliath. Okay? He was going alone. David was alone. There was nobody to, uh, uh, getting ready to go with him to fight against Goliath. But the Lord enabled him to fight and get victory over Goliath and the army of Philistines. That is what we see in that story. So let me tell you one thing from the life story of David that whenever we go through the situations like this, where there is nobody to come with us, nobody to help us, nobody to support us, nobody to pray for us, nobody to stand with us, remember, we will experience the presence of God in that situation. Hallelujah. Here, we understand David was going through a situation which is like, a, like all of the empty place. I mean, there was nobody to stand with him. He was going alone to fight against, the, to have a battle against the, I mean, the challenges of Goliath. I mean, remember, I mean, in that situation, the, present, the, 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 the situation where there is nobody to I mean, come with us. There is nobody to stand with us. Hallelujah. Nobody to help us. Nobody to support us. Remember the presence of God. You will experience the presence of God in that I mean, situation. Hallelujah. And again, uh, we see after the, I mean, uh, you know, you know, we have to, we have to, I mean, go to the New Testament. We have many things with us. I mean, we have the presence of God with us. I mean, after the resurrection also, I mean, Jesus, I mean, promised the Holy Spirit, the helper or the comforter or the companion to be with the children of God, to comfort them and to guide them in all the situations of their life. I mean, so, you know, you know, Jesus said in the, uh, I mean, uh, Matthew, uh, 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 I mean, I'm uh, sorry, John chapter 16, verse 7. We'll read that verse. Yeah, John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So this is the promise of God. This is the promise of God, you know. So whenever we go through the situation of the owl, I mean, of the waste place or the empty place, I mean, we have to trust in the, I mean, word of God. We have to, I mean, cling upon the promises of God. There, I mean, uh, Jesus is giving the promise that very clearly, truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the helper or the comforter, or the counselor will not come to you, or companion will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Remember one thing, you know, whenever we are going through a situation where there is nobody to help us, where there is, I mean, I mean nobody to support us, hallelujah, we have to understand that God has given and God has promised the, 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 the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many of you are just getting that experience of the presence of the Holy Spirit whenever we go through that situation. Hallelujah. I mean, so for the New Testament believers, for the New Testament people, let me remind you one thing. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going, I mean, Jesus was ascending to heaven. He promised that, okay, I mean, this is good for you that I'm going away from this side. Because, I mean, if I go, I will ask to my Father, and the Father God will send the, I mean, Holy Spirit to comfort you, to guide you, to, to counsel you, amen, as a, as, a, as a companion for you, amen. So that's the reason that we need the comfort sometimes. Sometimes we are going through a situation where there is nobody to comfort us. There, there is nobody to console us. You know, the situation where, uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, there are many people, but they cannot do anything. They cannot help us. They cannot support us. We, we feel that we are alone. We are, I mean, we feel that we are isolated. I mean, listen very carefully. The presence of the Holy Spirit is promised for the people of God. There is the presence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I don't know how many of you are experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit whenever we go through the struggles and the afflicted I mean, situation. 
Hallelujah. This morning, I just pray that, oh Lord, hallelujah. I mean, whenever the people are going through the struggles in their life, whenever the people are going through the I mean, difficult situations and the pains in their life, hallelujah, where I mean, they feel that there is nobody to help them, where they feel that there is nobody to support them, hallelujah, where they feel that there is nobody to encourage them, hallelujah. I believe that the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is promised by Jesus Christ, will help you, will comfort you, amen, hallelujah, will counsel you, hallelujah, will help you. I mean, it will be a companion for you, hallelujah, and it's a comforter for the people of God, for the believers, hallelujah. And the, 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 you know, the, and the purpose of sending the Holy Spirit was to remove the loneliness from us and to guide us and comfort us, hallelujah. So let us all, I mean, pray together, oh Lord, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit also, I mean, in this world to survive in this wretched world, hallelujah. You know, many times, I mean, Jesus Christ was here, I mean, for 33 and a half years. And three and a half years, I mean, Jesus was I mean, walking with the, the disciples and he was speaking to the people. And always, I mean, he was, I mean, I mean, speaking to the disciples and the multitude. You know, many a chance, you know, these people, the disciples and the multitude were, I mean, fed by Jesus Christ. Wherever they were, I mean, going through the difficult situations where there is nothing to eat and they were going through that, I mean, painful situation. I mean, Jesus provided all the blessings upon the people. But at the same time, we read that, you know, when Jesus was going, I mean, ascending or, I mean, just before the ascension of Jesus Christ, he was, I mean, I mean, the people were asking to him. The people were asking, maybe even before the, before the crucifixion also, I mean, many people, many disciples were asking, oh, Jesus Christ, oh Lord, I mean, you are going from here and you are no more with us in this world. What can we do? What are we going to do? We can't do anything. We have nothing. And Jesus said, don't worry, don't worry. Why are you worried about all those things? You don't, do not be worried about anything. The first thing I'm giving you, the peace of mind. Hallelujah. I give my peace unto you. That's what we read in, the, I mean, John chapter 14, I think. You know, I give my peace unto you. That is more than enough for you to survive in this wretched and in this I mean, troublesome world. Difficulty world. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that Jesus said, okay, I'm giving my peace unto you. That peace nobody can take from you. Hallelujah. The peace which is, I mean, permanent. The peace, the comfort which is permanent. I mean, the world is giving us the, the, the temporary peace and comfort. But God's presence will give us the, 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 the permanent, I mean, presence of God and the permanent comfort and the peace of God towards the people of God. Hallelujah. That's the reason, you know, you know I mean, Jesus said, again, okay, I'm giving my peace unto you. And also Jesus said one more thing. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to guide you, to comfort you, to, to, to give you the consolation, hallelujah, to give you the, 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 the presence and to, to help you and to, I mean, counsel you. Hallelujah. So let us all, I mean, receive the presence of the Holy Spirit also in our daily life. Hallelujah. Now, uh, now the third, uh, I mean, word which David is mentioning here is the sparrow, is the sparrow, I mean, on the house top. Okay, that is in uh, Psalm number 102, verse 7. Psalm number 102, verse 7. He is speaking, he is um, comparing himself with, a, with a, uh, the other bird that is a sparrow on the house top. Okay, we will read that verse also. 102, verse 7. I lie awake and am like a sparrow alone on the house top. I am. Like a sparrow on the house top. Well, we did the Mughal Lirikina, Uru, Uru Sparrow Pole, Uru, Uru Purigil Nepole Yanagum. So the word sparrow, I mean, represents the un, unaccompanied situation. Unaccompanied situation. That means there is nobody to, I mean, give a company for him. Okay, the, the unaccompanied situation. Or uh, you can you can you can see that uh, I mean a secluded situation, secluded situation, or uh, I mean uh, I mean segregated situation or neglected situation. Okay, neglected situation is there, and uh, I mean segregated situations are there. You know sometimes uh, I mean uh, they were I mean neglected. 
I mean, they, they were they were I mean I mean uh, uh, they were uh, in a situation of un, un, I mean unaccompanied situation. Okay, so this is what we I mean study about the, the sparrow. Okay, and again, a sparrow is a I mean a gregarious and would normally be found in groups. Okay, always the sparrows are traveling group by group. Okay, groups are there. Okay, either large or small. Okay, maybe a small uh, a, a group or a large group. Okay, so usually these these birds are flying. I mean, uh, 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 as group by group. But here, when the psalmist is talking about the being like a sparrow, alone upon the housetop, alone upon the housetop, he's speaking of what is out of character and unnatural for the bird. I told you, usually the sparrows are traveling or flying group by group. But here, the situation is entirely different. The situation is entirely different. You know, the psalmist David is, I mean, saying that, I mean, I mean I'm being like a sparrow alone upon the housetop. He's speaking of what is out of the character of the bird. I mean, I mean you know, the, 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 this would tend to indicate that the bird was either ill or lost its child or its mate. That's that may be the reason that the sparrow is sitting alone, sitting alone on a on a house top. Okay, so that's where maybe maybe this bird, I mean, have uh, I mean some illness in his I mean body and some sickness, or it had lost its child or its mate. I mean, so you know when you go to Old Testament, you know we see uh, in uh, in in Old Testament about David. He had to go through many sleepless situations in his life. The sleepless situations of the life of David. You know, for example, I mean, when we go to 2 Samuel chapter 15, 2 Samuel chapter 15, we will read one verse from there, then we will go on. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 14. So David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Yes, so in this particular verse, we read about the rebellion and the fight of Absalom with his own father, David. So Absalom was the own son of David. So here we see Absalom, the son of David, he is trying to rebel against his father. And he is trying to fight against his father, David. It was really a painful situation. You know, David, as, as I mean, Absalom as being as a son, I mean, when he is fighting against David, his father, and one, when uh, his own son is rebellious against uh, his father, David, how much painful situation that uh, he was going through. It was a challenge for, I mean, David. What? David was the king of Israel. But because of the revolts of Absalom, he had to leave that kingship and the throne and he flees away from Jerusalem. That's what we read in, uh, I mean, 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 14. He says that, okay, let us flee from here. Let us go from here. We cannot stay here in this Jerusalem, in this throne. I'm a king. I'm a king. That's true. But I'm not able to stay here on this throne, or I'm not able to stay here in the Jerusalem because my son Absalom is revolting against me. My son Absalom is, I mean, getting ready to fight against me, and he is, I mean, I mean, proclaimed a battle against me, the father. So David, I mean, was king of the even though he was a king of Israel, because of his own son Absalom, he had to leave his kingship. He had to leave his throne. And he flees away from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. We see on the way, uh, when, we, when we see that on the way, he was, he was losing his sleep. He was not able to, he was not able to, I mean, I mean, sleep. He was not able to sleep. I mean, um, uh, what, that's what, you know, when you, when, you, when, you, when you go to go through that, I mean, uh, verses, especially in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Second Samuel chapter 15, we understand that okay, he was, I mean, not having the sleep at all. He was not able to sleep in the nights. Nobody was there to stand with him in his trouble, but he was trusting in the Lord and God enabled him to return back to his position 
hand back to his throne. This is the wonder working hands of God. Hallelujah. This morning, I will request every one of you that you are going to experience the presence of God whenever we are going through this situation of the, I mean, of this Pharaoh, I mean, sitting alone on the housetop and just mourning something, you know, just, I mean, crying. I mean, so this, I mean, David, I mean, uh, David, the psalmist also had gone through the sleepless nights and sleepless situation. I mean, you know, the troubles in his life, but he was always trusting in the Lord. You know, the, the, at, the, at the end of the story, we understand that God enabled him to return back to his position as a king, and he came back to the, to the position of throne. Now, uh, uh, again, now on the, on, on the other occasions, okay, this is one occasion, this is one occasion that he was trying to flee away from Jerusalem to escape from there. But in other occasions, when we study about the other occasions of the, uh, of the life history of David, I mean, he had been doing everything as an eagle. You know, sometimes he was fleeing away from uh, Jerusalem and he was fleeing away from the position. And sometimes he was doing everything as an eagle. Eagle. So, uh, you, know, you know, but, the, but what happens here, uh, here the griefs of the people had pulled, him, pulled down him. Okay, so the griefs of the people and the attacks of the people have pulled down himself and the brightness was gone from his own eyes. There was no brightness in his own eyes. When you read, go through that verses, we understand. And the beauty from his face was lost. He seemed to be himself to be as a lonely bird sitting among the fallen places and prostrate temple of his native land. Hallelujah. So this was the situation of David sometimes. I mean, he was sitting alone like a bird. I mean, sparrow. Hallelujah. So let me let me just remind you one thing from the life experience of David that David would there would be sometimes even in our personal life too. Of course. I mean, there are many people in your house. There are many people in your church. Of course, your wife may be with you. Your husband may be with you. Your children are with you. Your kids are with you. Amen. And you are surrounded by many, I mean, a, a, a huge number of relatives and friends. Your church people, your pastor are there, and your friends are there sometimes. But remember one thing, even though they all are with you, they cannot help you. The, the, some situations will be like that. Sometimes they can't do anything. They are there. They are sitting with you. Maybe your wife is, I mean, uh, sleeping I mean, I mean, next to you on the same bed. But the situation, when, when you feel that, okay, I mean, they cannot do anything. I'm in this situation. I'm in a painful situation. I mean, my relatives are there. My friends are there. My sons, my, my children are there. My parents are there. But they are unable to help you. They can do anything to you. I mean, they were helpless. They are helpless. Hallelujah. You feel that you are alone facing the struggles. You are alone going through the struggle. Hallelujah. That situation. But remember, one thing that you are surrounded by the presence of God, nothing is to be worried about. Hallelujah. So this morning, this is the encouragement for you to speak about, I mean, there is a presence of God whenever you go through the, the, the struggles in your life. Hallelujah. Just remember that, I mean, I mean, you are surrounded by many people, but there is no problem. They cannot help you. They cannot do anything with you. But I mean, God's presence can help you. God's presence can I mean, I mean, encourage you, and that is what we need in this world. Hallelujah. So we see the same situation of Sparrow on the housetop had happened in the life of Jacob also. You will go to that point. You know, in the life of Jacob, you know, in Genesis chapter 37, verses 34 and 35. Genesis chapter 37, verses 34 and 35. Then Jacob tore his clothes put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and his daughters arose to confirm, comfort him. But he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Okay, so here also, you know, Jacob, we are, we are studying about Jacob now. It's not about, uh, I mean, David, this is about Jacob. You know, Jacob also had to go through the same situation like a sparrow on the housetop, sitting alone, crying. 
I mean, so Jacob was thinking that he lost his younger son, Joseph. Actually, it was not happened. So he thought, and because of uh, his other son said, okay, I mean, he is lost, he died. Okay, so Jacob was thinking, just thinking that he lost his younger son, Joseph. He could not bear the death of Joseph. He could not bear the death of Joseph. And he was in painful situation. And he started to tore his clothes. It is written there. He started to tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, put on sackcloth and mourned for his own son many days. I mean, all his sons and daughters came to comfort him. But all his sons and daughters came to comfort him. But he refused to, to be comforted. He said, no. He said, no, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave, sitting alone with depression to see him later. This was a situation of, this was a situation of, I mean, uh, I mean, Jacob, that he was sitting alone. He was saying there are many people coming and trying to comfort him. But he was saying that, okay, I will be sitting here. I want to sit alone. I'm just trying to mourn. And I'm just trying to cry, sitting alone with the depression and doing something there. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand from the life history of Jacob. But we see, uh, we see that he got back his son, Joseph, one day. And he was so happy to see him later. Hallelujah. This is a great thing that God is doing. Even though he was mourning against, uh, mourning about his son, Joseph. Even though he was in a depressed situation, I mean, there is a, there is a time that uh, I mean, God is doing the miracles in the life of the people of God. Hallelujah. Even though he was sitting alone, even though Jacob was, I mean, alone, even though Jacob was mourning in the presence of God, and even though, even though he was going through the I mean, painful situation because of the death of Joseph. But we understand, I mean, he got back his Joseph's son, Amen. And one day, and he was so happy to see him later. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand from the life history of, I mean, Jacob and Joseph. Now, we will go to the, I mean, another verse that is Psalm number 84, verse 3. Psalm number 84, verse 3. Even the sparrows have found a home, and the swallows a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altar, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God. Yes. Okay. Here, the, the psalmist, maybe the, the psalmist is not uh, the David. Here, uh, the sons of Korah. Yes. Yeah. Sons of Korah. Korah. They are, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, singing this song. And uh, they say that, okay, I mean, uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, the, the, the situation of the sparrow, you know, uh, even, even the sparrow has found a home. What is that? Even the sparrow has found a home and the sparrow a nest for herself where she may have her young a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. That means the sparrow is finding a separate place in the altar or in the temple. Even when, we, when you I mean, go to the other I mean, uh, verses also, we will understand even though, though we, will be, we will be thinking about uh, I mean, though in the, in the next uh, I mean, time. You know, thou also find the nest or the house, I mean, on the, on the, on the, I mean, house top or the top of the building. Okay, so here also we can see that the psalmist says that even the sparrow has found a home. So the sparrow has a, has a home at the altar or at the temple. What is the meaning of that? I mean, even though the people, the believers are going through the struggles, even though uh, the people, the believers are in the, in the situation of a sparrow, I mean, sitting alone, I mean, where they are sitting, where they are sitting in the presence of God, right? They are sitting near the altar. Hallelujah. They are sitting, I mean, they are experiencing the presence of God at the temple of God. Hallelujah. I mean, we have to know one thing that, I mean, I mean, even though we are going through the difficult situations and painful situations, I mean, remember one thing that always, I mean, be under the I mean, shadow of the almighty God. Hallelujah. That's what I mean, Psalm number 91 says. Hallelujah. I mean, we are under the shadow of the almighty God. I mean, when you are sitting under the shadow of the almighty God, when you're sitting in the temple, I mean, you have many things to receive from the temple. 
You have many things to receive from the altar. Hallelujah. There is a worship and there is a singing. There is a messages. I mean, there is a sermon. The word of God is there. I mean, clapping your hands and praising the name of this, the name of the Lord is there. Praising the name of the Lord is there. Hallelujah. I mean, lift your hands here is there. I mean, everything that you receive from the temple of God, that's the reason that the sparrows are founding, I mean, their home at the altar. Hallelujah. And they are finding and they know that okay, this is the place near your altar, O oh Lord, Almighty King and God. Hallelujah. They have a nest for themselves at the altar or at the temple. Hallelujah. This is the this is the right day this morning that the God wanted to speak to every person. Hallelujah. And he says that, okay, I mean, you have a presence of God in the temple. You have the, the, the power of God in the temple. Hallelujah. And we have to experience that, I mean, surrounding presence of God. I mean, whenever we stay under the shadow of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. That, that's what we heard, I mean, yesterday also from uh, Pastor Thomas Sharia. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that once again I remind you, I just remind you that when I mean, we have a presence of God, surrounding presence of God, covering presence of God, hallelujah, covering presence of God, where there is a transformation, where there is a changes, I mean, in our Christian life, in our personal life, in our family life, in our church life, in our society. Hallelujah. So let us trust in the Lord. Let us ask for the presence of God. Let us ask for the I mean, presence of the Holy Spirit also. I mean, in our day-to-day -day life to encourage us. I mean, to, to comfort us. Hallelujah. Even in the New Testament, Jesus is speaking about the sparrows. Right? Jesus is speaking about the sparrows in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31. Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31. <clears throat> Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them fall to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. What a great and wonderful words it is. Amen? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Our hairs, we do not know how many hairs are there in our head, but God is numbering, and God knows the number of the hair which is on our head. You know, in this particular verse, Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31, I mean, I mean Jesus is asking a question Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. I mean, if a sparrow is falling down, that God knows that. The Father knows that. But again, he's speaking to the human being. He's speaking to the, to the believers. Those who are professing that they are the believer. He's speaking that, but even the hairs of your heart are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Usually, the sparrows are considered as a small and silly bird, right? The sparrows are considered as a small and silly bird. But remember, God never forsake them. They are also counted in the sight of God. Remember one thing, they are also counted in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Whatever happens in our personal life, I mean, I mean, just think about, I mean, I mean, God's presence is there. There is a there, there is a plan of God, there is a presence of God. And God has a purpose. God has a purpose about uh, the people of God, the believer of God. I mean, that uh, whenever we are going through that situation, I mean, God will help us and uh, God will continually, I mean, encourage us uh, and, uh, and the presence of God is with us. Hallelujah. You know, usually this board is con considered as a stall. You know, sometimes we also think that I'm nobody in front of the others. And when I, when, when I consider others, I don't have any talents in that. We also feel like that same, same same thing is happening. I mean, sometimes we are also doing like these birds that sitting somewhere alone and lonely about many things and worried about I mean, many anxieties. You know, we are the people many times we are having many anxieties in our life. You know, we are also sitting alone in a place, sitting alone in a place, just crying or mourning. Okay, we are doing like these birds sitting there. I mean, and lamenting, lamenting about many things. And we are worried about many things. We have many anxieties in our life. 
but let me encourage you all this morning that even though you are going through all these situations hallelujah all these situations take courage because god has already provided us the needful facilities to make us alive and strong hallelujah remember one thing hallelujah i mean when you go through this situation just take courage get the courage from the presence of god because god has already provided us the needful facilities to make us alive and strengthen us god has a plan that i mean you must be strengthened hallelujah and you god has provided already all the needful facilities for the people of god to strengthen them to encourage them to support them I mean you know first of all god sent his son to die on the cross to cure our spiritual loneliness and alienation you know sometimes we feel that we are lonely sometimes we feel that we are restless we don't have any rest we don't have any any companion okay sometimes we we, we are thinking that we are neglected from others we are secluded and sometimes we feel that okay i'm sitting alone there is nobody to help me now first time first thing let me tell you god has sent his own son to die on the cross of calvary to cure our spiritual loneliness and our isolation secondly god gave us the local church no don't think that okay okay i have nobody or there is nobody to help me or something no 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 don't think about those things but remember one thing that you have a local church you have a local church you have a pastor you have a church members you have your friends then they will encourage you the pastor will encourage you the the believers the the, the local church members will encourage you your your relatives your parents your children they will encourage you and that is the god's provision even the church is a god's provision i believe church is a god's provision you know this is this is a great thing that let me let me tell you to i mean every person of this church eternal life church of god you know remember one thing that i mean this church is a blessing for you. hallelujah there are i mean many people i mean praying for you hallelujah even though you are going through the i mean difficult situation even though you are facing many challenges in your life hallelujah remember you have a church you have a church it's a great thing and it's a blessing for you that you are attending in this eternal life church of god hallelujah remember all the families of our church i mean they are very eager to help everyone i mean helping each other i mean i mean having a fellowship with each other i mean they are having a, a, a heart of i mean fellowship a heart of helping others and supporting others hallelujah so remember i mean the church is the provision and church is the blessing for every person whenever i mean you are going through the emotional loneliness and isolation and the, the, the situation where you you feel that you are neglected from your family you are neglected from the friends you are neglected from your community your society whatever it may be you have a church that is a blessing i mean the local church is a blessing for you thirdly thirdly we have a presence of the almighty god always with us to take away the feeling of loneliness from our life hallelujah and also there is the presence of the holy spirit in our life always hallelujah and we have the presence of the holy spirit in our life to take away the feeling of the loneliness from our life because the holy spirit is the companion for you the holy spirit is the comforter for you the holy spirit is the counselor for you hallelujah so that's what we read about the i mean these two i mean i mean words and uh, the next word is the dog but we will be thinking about that in the next sunday so i would like to close the message of today uh, with these two words and uh, shall we all close our in the eyes in the presence of god for a moment